Hi, and welcome to another episode of Agile Marketing Academy. I'm your host, Batanj, and you may say that in a metaphorical universe, I am now in a full hibernation, somewhere secluded, and away from technology and not podcasting. And that is why I've disappeared for a couple of weeks. That cannot be further from the truth. I'm in fact in my studio every day, but unfortunately I don't have time to do podcasting because a lot is happening on my personal life, all but great news, so uh, nothing bad is happening. Um, I don't want to bore you guys with the story of my life, so just know that uh, it's all great news and I'll be back in a few weeks and to the regular schedule of my podcast. Um, but for now, I must break my promises and miss a few episodes until I handle a few personal things on my end. If you like this podcast and you'd like to support me, as always, appreciate you very, very much. And I would appreciate it even more if you hit that subscribe button and enable notifications to make sure you're not missing any of my future podcasts as they come out in such disorganized way. But you know that they're going to be awesome as always. At least we can hope for that, right? But ladies and gentlemen, I could not sit away for now and say nothing well. The new thing, the new kid in town, Threads, a new social media platform is out. So, today, we're going to be dissecting threads. So, I did a survey on LinkedIn, and I can say majority of the users around me have not started using threads yet. And so, I had to jump in there myself and take it for a spin and see what's going on and report back to you. You can actually add me on there if you want. My tag name is, do they call it tag name? I don't know. I feel like a person that doesn't even use social media but that is not further from the truth anyways my tag name is make your mark underscore alpha i'm going to be dorking about digital marketing and transformation there too don't ask me why alpha though i just wanted to use make your mark in my tag name and it wasn't available so i decided to make the next part be alpha but now i'm too lazy to change it anyways digressing so let's get started before we go into threats i want to set the scene and the mood for walking down memory lane once upon a time in a world where the internet was just beginning to weave its magic there lived a young man named um what should i call myself let's call myself mr mark i was an old soul always seeking solace and connection in the vast expanse of digital universe. My journey through the timeline of social media applications would take me on a nostalgic adventure, filled with fond memories, heartfelt conversations, and the thrill of new beginnings. It all, of course, began in early 2000s when I discovered Yahoo Messenger. I'm not sure if you guys... Remember that uh, it was a big thing back in Iran with its cheerful yellow smiley face and its iconic bing sound. Yahoo Messenger became my portal to the virtual world. I spent countless hours chatting with my friends and strangers, or what we called pen pals in the past, laughing at funny emoticons and even finding a touch of romance amidst the sea of text. As years passed, the digital landscape shifted, and new platforms emerged, captivating my curious spirit. In the mid-2000s, I found myself diving into the colorful world of MySpace. It was a place where personalization reigned supreme, where your profile spoke volumes about your personality through glittering backgrounds, song choices, and the top friends displayed proudly on your page. I spent evenings meticulously crafting my MySpace profile, connecting with old and new friends alike, all while discovering new music and sharing my favorite band's latest songs. Now, interesting fact about that area. I don't know how many of you guys know this. Around the same time, I was actually living in Budapest 
and I went there to um, study electronic and informatics. I wanted to go into robotics and all. And one thing that was very popular back then was also Orcut, which was built by Google. And um, a lot of people from Europe was using it. Didn't I don't think it ever got popular in U.S., um, but it was like a forum of some sort and you had to be invited. Um, around the same time, I was kind of like playing around with the idea of being a blogger. So I had my first blog that was, um, I don't actually even remember what was what it was about, but I started blogging and then I realized how to insert JavaScript tags uh, or scripts on my blog so that when somebody loads the page, it automatically starts playing a certain music. Uh, so I was so proud of doing that back then. This was before I went to engineering school. Um, I was really just past high school and I was re um, uh, reading and studying to take what was sort of like the SATs here to enter the engineering school. So for me to write a script to that allowed me to do that, perfect. Um, but yeah, then I saw that MySpace is essentially doing the same thing. I was super excited about it. And uh, you know the rest of the story. But anyways, let's go back to the dramatic walking down the memory lane. In 2006, something extraordinary happened and Facebook was born. And it swept across college campuses like a gentle breeze of change. I found myself caught in its wake, joining the ranks of its exclusive club, eagerly awaiting the excitement that lay within. The simplicity of the interface, the poke feature, and the ability to share photos made Facebook phenomenal. It was a different, it was, it, it was a game changer. And it was drawing people from all walks of life. I watched as this uh, social media circle uh, migrated from MySpace to Facebook and found its digital home. In 2010, of course, another contender emerged, capturing its attention once more. Twitter burst the scene, enticing me with its bite-sized updates and thrill of sharing my thoughts in 140 characters or less. By the way, it was painful. I was revealed in the fast-paced nature of the platform, connecting with a diverse array of people from celebrities to everyday individuals, all condensed into a single timeline. Twitter became the virtual coffee shop of some sort. But that said, it was kind of annoying too, wasn't it? I mean, describing your thoughts in 140 characters or less, at least for a blogger. And let me tell you, I wasn't a successful blogger. But, you know, I like to write, tell myself that I was a content writer. Um, expressing yourself truly in 140 characters or less, painful. Not possible, but painful. Anyways, I'm digressing again. So years flew by again. Landscape continued to evolve and... I found myself exploring various uh, social media applications like Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Each had its own unique allure, drawing me into the world of mesmerizing visuals and pictures and cat videos and creative <laughs> expressions. And Instagram slowly started, you know taking on. I, I wasn't really about it at first, but, you know, I saw the appeal more and more when, you know, I saw my friends looking at pictures and cat. Honestly, I was there for the cat videos. They were very cute and awesome. And then, don't get me wrong, that uh, don't get me, uh, what was I going to say? Don't get me started 
Oh my god. I'm not going to even edit that out of this cuz it's hilarious. You see how I'm, I w- I drank some Red Bull today after a very long time and my brain is literally going 1000 miles an hour. TikTok, addictive videos, you might remember the dance challenges, you know. Um But why am I telling you all of this? Um Really, um, I feel like as a user, I started to be super tired of all these applications, you know, specifically when after a certain point in time, they all just became somewhat the same or they started bringing features that I was like, "Ah, this is confusing but at the same time i really don't know why you were going with this like what is the purpose of this and why is it so next level next gen for people like i i really don't get it you know um it feels like we're constantly playing catch up uh each app comes with its own Rules and algorithms, targets and demographics, which, I mean, target audience, no problem. Instagram then comes in with the reels and Facebook launches the story. Now, that's the thing about, I say, it doesn't make any sense. So a good example of that is Snapchat. I was never about Snapchat. I tried Snapchat maybe four times since it launched i bought the stock i sold the stock i bought the stock again only to sell it again because i was just not understanding the whole snapchat thing i i didn't know like i couldn't picture myself market to snapchat you know uh that said i mean there were companies like i believe nike was um um advertising on snapchat but the cool thing about it was like while i did not understand snapchat i totally got it as like a way that innovated a new way for instagram and facebook to be able to um, open opportunities for people to communicate reels and stories and um, all that fun stuff and then clubhouse you know, Pinterest, um, Clubhouse was super big at some point and everybody was talking about it. Uh, it was a fad of some sort. It came back. They're still using it. And there, I, I believe it's a very good way of people communicating with each other for new ideas to be born, for people to start having real dialects with each other. Um, God. Did I say dialects? I mean dialogues with each other. Um, Pinterest, I really love uh, to see everybody's creativity. There is a new way for people to be able to show off their creativity, bring in new innovative uh, creations uh, in the arts arena. But anything beyond that, it just felt like it was a pain to um, sort of deal with and as a marketing manager I understand the importance of staying up to date with uh, latest trends and leveraging these platforms for business purposes but again as a user it just started to become very difficult to dedicate time to be on every single one of them you know digital strategy and a marketer, I can't simply go and ignore a brand new channel that potentially allows my clients to reach out to their audience. Um, but, you know, as, as a user, would I really invest my time to be on Snapchat? Probably not. That said, again, as digital strategies as a marketer, I can't simply go and ignore the brand new channel that can potentially allow my clients to reach their audience. And let me tell you, I normally 
I really don't want to talk about technology when it first comes out. I want to let the hype die down, analyze the users, understand the landscape a little bit better. Otherwise, during the honeymoon phase, everything looks peachy, you know. But for Threads, my sense has told me that I have to really talk about this because it is important for marketers to answer the question today, is this a fad that will die down eventually be forgotten or can we really use this as a new channel in our integrated strategies? Hence why I decided to talk about threads today. <clears throat> and I said threads. That's a <laughs> Persian thing. Threads. Uh, we have a difficulty doing that there. Uh, so let's dive in. Um, Meta, which is the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, just debuted threads and Guess what? They've positioned it to be a rival to Twitter. The plans for this app were confirmed just three months ago, and now it's here. And oh boy, it's made a quite a splash. Within the first four hours, Threads was embraced by 5 million users, and by Thursday morning, it had surged to a whopping 30 million. This make it the fastest downloaded app ever. Literally. Not only has it been a hit with the general public, but a host of celebrities, prominent brands, and high-profile figures have already joined in. In fact, when I joined in, I tried to see what are the words and what are the voices out there in my space. Um, my space. <laughs> uh, talk about social media channels, huh? Um and I saw that a lot of digital agencies are now, you know, posting on threads. Uh, folks, we're here to talk about big names like Sarah Jessica Parker, Oprah, and Kim Kardashian. Even brands like Billboard, HBO, NPR, Netflix set up their account mere minutes after the launch of the platform. Now, you might be wondering, what's threads all about? How does it function? Is it easy to get an account? So we are here to break all those down, taking it back to the basics in case nobody here has heard or explored Threads. Threads is basically an app that you can download for free, and it's all about text-based conversations, just like Twitter. Meta has created Threads as a, as a space where communities come together to discuss everything from the topics you care about today and uh, what will be trending tomorrow. That's basically what they said. So whether you're keen on discussing your favorite TV shows, hobbies, or even political debates, Threads is the new place to do it. It allows you to connect directly with your favorite creators and others who love the same things. Or, hey, why not build a loyal following of your own to share your ideas, opinions, and creativity with the world? Sounds familiar, right? Um, and we're going to dive into this as one of the reasons I think... Um, threats is not going to make it but yeah let's explore a little bit more so as I said some of the celebrities are already on there uh, Jennifer Lopez uh, Guy Fieri Gordon Ramsay um, their content for now seems to be more introductory like um, morning all posting today with optimism peace love all that stuff. But uh, with a new kid in town, um, literally launched last week, uh, it has already garnered about 100 million signups, leaving a noticeable dent in the Twitter's traffic. Literally, we are seeing the traffic from Twitter going down and the threads going back up. And threads is still in the infancy. Uh, it's just very remarkable to see that this milestone was uh, that uh, this milestone was achieved quicker than what it was experienced with OpenAI's chatbot ChatGPT, which 
hit the same mark in two months. Instagram's top dog um, and other meta executives are pitching threads as more uplifting public square uh, for communities that never really embraced Twitter. The enthusiastic signups seem to be proof that users are welcoming this fresh platform. Or are they? Again, something that we are going to talk about in the future. We are talking about everything that is happening today and happened in the past uh, week or so. So the potency of threats has already sent ripples through Twitter's infrastructure Uh, Matthew Prince, CEO of Cloudflare, revealed a decline in Twitter's traffic over the weekend, commenting that it was, um, quote-unquote, tanking. Uh, While Threads is off to a great start in the U.S., it still has a vast playground to venture out to, into, namely Europe, uh, which uh, presents some regulatory hurdles, according to them. Uh, should threats maintain its surge of user engagement, it could become a serious rival to Twitter, which had about 238 million daily active users last summer, uh, according to their most recent quarterly earnings report. The launch of the threats has already raised some hackles in Twitter's camp. Uh, Elon Musk, the CEO, the man behind Twitter seems to be worried about this new competitor. His long time, long time lawyer um, has fired a shot at Meta, accusing them of unlawful uh, misappropriation of trade secrets. However, things got even more heated between Twitter and threats. Uh, uh, CEO Elon Musk and Zuckerberg. Um, exchanged online barbs and um, the twin tension even escalated to uh, into the you know future cage match as we know the, the war of the words uh, intensified and um, uh, intensified when the fast food chain Wendy's posted a screenshot of threats post and suggested Zuckerberg should go to a space just to really make him mad. Um, A clear nod to Musk's SpaceX. (laughs) All this back and forth suggested that uh, we are in for an interesting talk of war between threats and Twitter. It will be fascinating and it will definitely be a drama that is going to be all over social media for the uh, near future. How does one hop onto threats is the question. And more importantly, can you exit if you wanted to? To get started, all you need is your Instagram account, your username and password, and account name carry over seamlessly to threats. However, you do have the option to personalize your bio on threats. To make things even easier, the app allows you to import the list of accounts you follow directly from Instagram, ensuring a swift transition. Existing tr- threats, on other hand, is not straight uh, forward. And I apologize, I said existing threats. <laughs> Exiting threats, on the other hand, is not as straightforward. Users have the ability to temporarily disable their profile via the app's settings section but as stated in the company's privacy policy the only way to permanently delete your threats profile is to delete your instagram account additionally some concerns have been raised about the quantity of data that threats much like instagram can gather this include details like location contact search history browser history contact info and more as mentioned in the apple's app store now from the top if i want to uh, stop and take the conversation somewhere else this raises a question for marketers because really if we are talking advertisement or organic growth if at least for the time being um Acti- the active users um, 
on threads is going to match the number of um, active users on Instagram, or maybe that's not a good way of saying it. Um, if there is an assumption that there is a active number of users on threads because Potentially, they just wanted to delete the app, but they couldn't because they didn't want to delete their Instagram account. Will it be an effective um, um, audience um, targeting for threats? Um, because this is going to kind of look like, you know, those emails that you receive from um, uh, you know, uh, certain contacts that they want to sell you an entire list, but the list hasn't been cleaned for uh, 10 plus years and everything bounces or nobody's there to respond back to you. And so if really the platform dies down or the interest in the platform dies down, but they're still um, showing active number of users, then is going to become problematic now there might there is going to be ways that they this can be trackable um i'm just not sure if that information is going to be available through um you know the advertising platforms in the future um so anyways uh there's two risks that i see here is you know are you going to literally talk to a brick of wall because there is no one out there to listen to you eventually if this thing goes down and number two is how would the data gathering really impact the uh, uh, privacy but at the same time the advertising in the future there's been a notable clamor among twitter users for alternatives since elon musk took over last year frequent technical glitches and policy revisions have led some prominent twitter users to pack their bags and leave uh, here's where meta scores over twitter its massive existing user base the hope is that the new app threads will attract a chunk of instagram's more than 2 billion global active users and that's a huge pull compared to Twitter's active user base, which hovers around 250 million. Um, so now it comes to answering some questions. Um, at least I had some questions and I tried to answer them for myself. And I think that they're beneficial for you too. Uh, mainly, is threat something that marketers must be aware of and start using? What potential usage will this app have for marketers and businesses? Will threats succeed where Twitter failed? And are we looking at successful or alternative to Twitter? So let's start with the first question. And since it's uh, intertwined with the second, I tried to answer them both at the same time. Is threat something we as marketers need to be aware of and make it be part of our strategy. And at the same time, uh, what potential usage will it have for us? The brief response to this will be, of course, it depends. I'll tackle the first and second question together. Uh, I never considered Twitter an essential part of my strategy. I never got into Twitter Per se. I had the spark at the very beginning. I tried it for a while. It just, I, I wasn't about it. And I, you know, engagement strategies just, I, I just didn't see that to be a proper channel for me. Um, so I never made it be an essential part of my strategy because I felt like it's not efficient in delivering the message right. Uh, this perception has been there since the start. Um, but, you know, uh, I didn't entirely turn my back on Twitter. I actually monitored the platform to understand what people were saying about the brands that I was responsible for. Companies like Zara also use this platform for customer service and public relations. So if you have a PR strategy or a robust social listening plan, Threads could potentially offer some similar advantages as Twitter. 
as the user base uh, increases and the conversations get more um, um, dynamic. Honestly, I joined Threads and didn't notice much of difference except for some minor UI variations and less toxic <laughs> environment. But this could change. I mean, you know, uh, it, mo it might become more disruptive um, or more disruptive users might migrate from Twitter to Threads. Uh, we'll never know. But will I be investing heavily on Threads? Hmm... Um, definitely not. And um, with that said, moving on to the final question. Could threads be the uh, alternative to Twitter where others have failed? Personally, I don't believe so. I perceive threads as passing trend that will likely falter in the near future unless significant alterations and pivots uh, made to the nature and usage of the application. Um, I don't see it more than to be more than a fad. Um, and I think it's going to die down and it's going to go away rather quickly. And I have my reasons for it. Uh, first, threads lack uniqueness. The fundamental rule for any startup is to offer unique value proposition. I mean, what's so different about you? What are you trying to do? How, how are you explaining yourself to the customer, your customer base or your audience that is different than your alternative version? And what is it so special? What are you offering a solution that will potentially change their life for good? Um, without a demand, uh, there will be no signups. And so without that unique value proposition, I just don't see how long this is going to go before we start seeing the number of users going down or that the prominent user base are going to be, uh, how to say, um, inefficient for marketing. Um, its creation seems uh, primarily motivated by competition with Twitter, even echoing a similar uh, Fediverse value proposition as uh, Mastodon. Um, so what's compelling reason to stick with it? I don't know. It managed to get 10 million users in the first seven hours of its launch, uh, but that was due to Instagram's users' curiosity and honestly, another thing is that like literally I just logged in and I signed up and boom, within seconds I had 25 to 50 followers. And I was like, man, this is the fastest my channel has ever grown in my entire life. Um, definitely felt good, but I don't think that I can actually use that as a, as a success metric. Uh, second to that is a thread seems to be less of um, a better version of Twitter because threads currently feels like Twitter clone without the functionalities and without the biggest presenter, you know, Elon Musk being running the show. So... Um, this really looks like something that can change over time. And it's possible that Meta launch threats to uh, kind of, it, it really looks like a MVP, minimum viable product. And um, I feel like it's going to be something that they can withdraw from any time that they want. Um and also another reason why is that it's really bound to encounter the same challenge as Twitter. It literally looks like Twitter. It functions like Twitter. It has, it's just, you know, there is no difference. So uh, Twitter's track record offers threats, a uh, crystal clear case study of potential issues, uh, including online hate, um, revenue diversification, 
advertising problems. Um, you know, I don't, uh, you know, Instagram has a successful revenue model, but uh, the unique value proposition was different in that sense. And it was a good investment, you know, but this, uh, not so much. And also, it's like being marketed as being an Instagram app. So, really, Meta is trying to leverage Instagram to make threads a new thing, a new success. But um, to establish this as an independent entity in the future, it's going to become prob- very problematic in the future. And um, uh, because of that non existent value proposition and identity, you know. Uh, so I uh, I don't know I uh, questioning it at least. We dare to say Thread is not a competitor yet. None of the users we have spoken to so far are closing down their Twitter accounts. Um, so it might be that they're just, you know, um, testing out the waters. In many ways, Threads remind me of Google Stadia venture. Uh, Stadia, if you guys ever remember or ever tried Stadia or read about it, Stadia aimed to cater to those who were interested in gaming but found the existing market either too expensive or overly complicated. And at first, when they, you know, came in all guns blazing and they were, uh, you know, showing off their strategy, uh, there was a lot of boom. There was a lot of conversation. However, this approach did not yield the desired outcomes. The non-gaming population shrinking and landscape has significant, significantly shifted. And statistically, um, 80% of the teenagers, respective of their gender, engage in video gaming to some extent. These younger demographics likely already own gaming consoles. They're on PC, they're on Xbox, they're on um, PS5. They already have historical games on those platforms. They've been a loyal customer. In fact, there is uh, even a, a, you know, a fan base uh, almost, you know, uh, there is a rigorous... um, um, uh, kind of like a pride amongst the Xbox fans versus the PS5 fans. And so Stadia was just in between two big players and had no place to go. And Stadia also imposed more stringent requirements than your conventional consoles. A constant online connection was necessary. You had to be located near a Stadia data center uh otherwise your streaming quality wouldn't be adequate for gaming um and this wasn't immediately a problem for most users in the US international support was superb uh subpar uh with only a select few countries having stadia support considering this location stadia was directly competing with established gaming systems across the board and that was very difficult um even with a flawless uh, internet connection stadia wouldn't work on planes trains subways or during an internet outage so it was kind of like they were going against what they were promising or they couldn't deliver on their promises along with that uh you know uh PC gamers, Xbox, PS5, they have massive amount of gaming and subscription. Lots of gaming to offer and none of that was available on Stadia. Xbox has Game Pass. Um, and then also it launched its own version of, um, what do you call it, um, uh, cloud gaming. So really... There was just, the stadia was just killed amongst all, 
you know, um, rapid fire of competitors from left and right. And so all that and complexity and the technology and uh, the difficulty of connecting with the uh, customer base uh, really was what killed Stadia for Google. Now, the problem that Stadia had was different, I can say. And so like, we can't really say, you know, apples to apples here. I get that. Uh, why does it, um, why did it remind me of Stadia? I think it was more about creating that scarcity, the value propositions, go-to-market strategy, <clears throat> and also the fact that, um, you know, um, there was no, you know, there was no uniqueness. There is no point in that competition. There was no point in that business. And so that's why it kind of reminded me of that. Really, um, you know, it created a buzz, it failed to deliver, and it was replaced by the competitors. This is the same reason why I think threats will go away. It has no additional value to the user. The user base was built off of Instagram users. Uh, again, I said, like, the minute that I jumped on threads, all of a sudden I have 50 followers. I mean, that's that's really crazy. I mean, and when I say matter of seconds, I'm not joking. I'm literally talking matter of seconds. Um, that said, I mean, I think that there is a successful model hidden inside this. Meta has Facebook, Instagram, VR, WhatsApp, and now threads. So really, if we want to make this threats be part of the integrated ecosystem, it can it can be fun. It can maybe turn into something cool like Call of Duty's uh, proximity chat. You know, it's hilarious to deal with, uh, you know, uh, listening to some of those uh, chats. And also it was a cool addition to the game. So it might be, I'm not saying that it is a proximity chat, but I can see this to be a good value to the overall integrated ecosystem of Meta, assuming it is properly placed. But alone by itself, nah, I just don't see it. I mean, I also didn't really understand the need for Instagram to have notes. I feel like the company ran out of ideas and now they're trying to go back and be MySpace again. It's just, it's crazy. Anyways, I talked too much. In closing, I think it would be better investment for Meta to work on improving their VR experience and invest in bringing new technology. What we really need in marketing, in gaming, in industries is opening new possibilities for new innovations, new technologies, companies taking initiative to be risky and, you know, opening up uh, new opportunities, bringing different versions of the same app, remastered games, different dimensions of the same phone. As a user, I'm not that impressed. As a marketer, I'm not that impressed. I really love to and encourage and support more newness, more innovation, new ways to communicate and connect to the customer base, to different people. Uh, I want to start talking about a whole new channel that will revolutionize the way that we will connect with each other in Web 3.0. Uh, that should be what it's about. I don't need another different version of a Twitter right now. Um, I need something new. And there is an opportunity to be new. It's just, you know, well, you never know. I might be the one that comes comes up, uh, comes up with it. Right? <laughs> Anyways, that's it, folks. We're concluding our podcast today. I apologize in advance if for the next month or so, podcasts will not be coming out in the same manner as before every Wednesday. Uh, it will potentially be very disorganized, but soon we will get a handle on everything and get back into a regular rhythm 
And uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again and again for spending your lovely time listening to me blabbing about marketing and technology. If you like my podcast, please subscribe and hit that notification to stay connected when I have my next release. Also, drop your thoughts down in the comments. This is a hot topic and new to all of us in the same way. Definitely love to pick your brain on C. What do you think about all this? Other than that, signing out from this episode. Until next time, stay curious, stay inspired, and stay active. Out.